The turmoil in regional banks, rising interest rates, and savers turn away from low-yielding cash deposits have led to a conspicuous side effect. Net inflows to money markets were $168 billion for the entirety of 2022. These vehicles' funds saw a whopping inflow of $362.1 billion in net flows just in March of 2023, and a total of $438.7 billion for the first quarter of this year. And one of the most popular destinations nation here of ultra short uh, income focused money market funds is ticker JPST with assets under management of almost 25 billion right behind Jeppy also from JP Morgan as the most popular actively managed fund on the entire market. So today I want to answer these three questions. What is JPST because it is a rather complicated fund followed by the competition. What's the alternatives you could be investing in if not JPST? And then finally, why even use these uh, ultra short income focused funds in the first place? I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, a like, subscribe, always appreciated. And let's get into this. So straight from the source, Tigger JPST is designed to deliver current income while seeking to maintain a low volatility of principle. The approach is as following and invest mainly in investment grade US dollar denominated fixed variable and floating rate debt employs a single globally integrated credit process centered on research driven sector allocation aka this is an actively managed fund doesn't follow a market weighted index or anything like that and finally, the third bullet point seeks to maintain a duration of one year or less under most market conditions. So again, this is ultra short term. Now, JPST is a rather full featured ETF. It has how many holdings? 582 different holdings. And here they break down the average uh, life of the holdings. So less than one year of duration comprises 78.8% at the current moment, one to three years, 20%. And they even have uh, a very small amount of longer three to five year duration. Here is the associated quality. So US government is just 2%, keep that in mind. Triple A is the largest single category at 27.2% of the holdings and then it goes down from there. Up here, we have a breakdown of the debt this ETF invests in. So for example, CDs, 16.5%, commercial paper, about 20%, cash equivalents, 20%, and corporate investment grade bonds, a third. And then here we have the top 10 holdings of the fund. You're certainly gonna see some recognizable names like Citizens Bank here. I do wanna point out that this fund having uh, 582 holdings is very well diversified. So no one holding is that much of the total portfolio. Also the expense ratio is pretty okay, 0.18%. But now let's shift focus and look at the actual uh, performance and the history of JPST. So I guess the first thing to note here is the fund isn't that old. It came into existence in June of 2017. And since then, this is the behavior of the price. Do take note of the values here of the y-axis. So for example, comparing this against the equity market, this is way more stable as you would expect, but there definitely is some movement here. But the whole reason why you would invest in this ETF is because of the monthly interest payment, which currently has a trailing 12 month yield of 4.61%. Because after all, the whole point of short duration money market funds is to provide a relatively safe place to park your cash and earn a competitive interest rate. Now this right here is the history of the dividend associated with JPST. And as you would expect, being that this is a short duration fund, it does relatively closely follow the federal funds rate. So back in 2020, following the pandemic, the interest rate on JPST took a nosedive along with the federal funds rate. And then more recently, as the rate went up, so did the interest payment for this fund. Most recent monthly interest payment was 19 cents per share on a share cost of about 50 bucks. Now the current uh, gossip on the street is that the federal funds rate is essentially near the peak of this cycle. Although we do have lots of unknowns, we don't know how long the Fed is going to keep rates this high, if they're going to begin cutting anytime soon, or if they're gonna to continue to raise rates. All of those actions are going to have a direct effect on how much income this fund produces. I'll go ahead and leave this resource down below. This is by Charles Schwab talking about uh, duration risk and how different length bonds track things like the federal or funds rate uh, differently. Now, when it comes to the alternatives of a fund like JPST, one of the most obvious are treasury bond ETFs. I'll also leave this page linked down below. This is a, just a comprehensive list of various different duration 
treasury ETFs. A fund like VGSH, which is a Vanguard short-term treasury ETF, is going to be most similar to a short-term fund like JPST. Although there's still a lot of differences between this and JPST because these are pure treasury funds. So ticker SHY, this is by iShares and it's a one to three year treasury bond ETF. This ETF also pays on a monthly basis and taking a look at the actual history of the interest payments, just like with JPST, it closely follows the federal funds rate. If you want some that's even more short term, T-Bill is a three month treasury bill ETF. This fund doesn't have the longest history ever, but generally shorter duration debt is less risky generally speaking, not financial advice. Now, personally, I do think we are at least near the peak of this rate height cycle. And thus I've been considering uh, potentially parking some cash in one of these funds as well. And the one I have my eyes on in particular is ticker bills, which is a three to 12 month duration T-bill ETF. Their most recent interest payment was 38 cents per share. That's a monthly payment on a share price of $99. So let us know in the comments below with interest rates at a relatively high level, according to recent history. Are you guys looking at these uh, cash parking instruments? And if so, do you think the extra complexity and risk of a fund like JPST is worth it over a standard treasury ETF? I definitely want to know what you guys think on the topic. If you guys are still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate the like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.